media family welcome back to the channel where we build in better men to build a better world okay listen i'm happy to say we got a very special topic today as you can see this video is going to cover the question does her degree make her a catch or does her career make her a catch or frankly, does her money make her a catch for that matter? We want to dive into this whole question of a woman's economic, educational, and career-based accomplishments and whether or not those things really create more attraction or rather the end-all be-all for attraction for men. Do those attributes really get a man excited? Before we dive in, I think a good way to kind of open up this topic, I want to look at an excerpt, or rather, I want to look at a quote from a female author. She's the author of a book called Otherhood, as opposed to Motherhood, okay? Her name is Melanie Notkin, and uh, when asked about her book titled Otherhood, here's what she had to say. Otherhood is the story of so many women of my generation, she says the daughters of the modern feminist movement, who expected to have the social, economic, and political equality our mothers didn't have, and surely the husband and children, they did. But many of us remain single and or childless as our fertile years wane. All right. Now listen, boys. I think that this summary of this book is telling. I haven't read the book, but I would imagine that the book kind of um, further examines what she describes here, goes into detail, and probably gives some anecdotal personal experience of her journey going through this, um, this pattern that we see in society, okay? Now, that aside, what is clear is that a female author like herself has been able to identify this trend, this trend of women thinking they were going to be able to have it all, like she referred to, all of this, you know, egalitarian equality and success in the corporate world, but also the home success of a wife and mother. All right. Now, unfortunately, we do not see that being the case. All right. I know. I don't know about you, but when I look around, I don't I don't see a lot of that. OK, I see a pattern quite the opposite, where it seems the more career driven, the more successful a woman is, the lower her chances of being in a happy, fulfilling marriage. OK, so I would encourage you guys to check out the work done by Dr. David Buss. He's an evolutionary psychologist from the University of Texas. The bulk of his work has focused on the sexual differences in attractiveness and attraction between males and females. Now, feel free to go ahead and check out all of his articles. Again, there's much scholarly work to be combed through. But in my kind of layman's research, I would summarize his work with the following note. Men and women are not attracted to the same thing. Now, again, you can really get super academic and very in the weeds when it comes to studying his work. But I think the main crux of the point here and what's useful for this video today is the fact that this intuitive assumption that men and women are attracted to different things is validated by peer-reviewed research and science, okay? Now, in general, we can summarize based on Dr. Buss's work that women are particularly keen on looking for certain factors that men do not look for in attractiveness. These are the things that women are typically, okay, according to this work, looking for in terms of looking for a man, someone who's more educated than her, or at least equally educated, someone of higher intelligence, someone with more success, okay? Now, these three components speak to this principle of hypergamy that you might hear referred to in the manosphere. Now, listen, boys, there's no need to get all hoity-toity about this. All we've really come to see here is that women are hypergamous. They want someone taller than them, better than them, smarter than them, makes more money than them, more educated than them, okay? 
Now, in this particular way, men and women are different. Despite how modern fourth wave feminism may scream to the contrary, men and women are in fact different in a huge way, in a fundamental way, in a way that is part of the driving force of our species as humans, okay? All right? The very nature of a woman's priority in male selection, in mate selection, that very difference runs counter to this idea that men and women are the same. This egalitarian notion that men and women are not different. Okay, now let's look at men. Based on this same peer-reviewed work, we see that men are typically attracted at most to youth, beauty, pleasantness, okay? So amiability or the ability to mold one's self to that man's lifestyle, program, and goals. That is, in fact, what men look for. Now, we're talking about pair bonding for relationship, not just one night stands, because there's really little difference when it comes to that scenario. Most people are just looking for, you know, the most genetically attractive specimen for the night. OK, but when it comes to forming a bond, forming a marriage, forming an LTR, a long term relationship, these are sexually asymmetric qualities. OK, it is the feminine pride that makes the observation of themselves that they like economic success, that they like someone who is financially successful. Um, that they like someone who is highly educated, primarily because in our modern society, advanced education is an indicator of economic stability or economic superiority, okay? So, modern movements, and what I would say is like fourth wave feminism, this movement has pushed this idea that men and women are essentially the same and that there's no difference. So the, the, the strength of that ideology in our current culture, okay, coupled with the pride of modern women to assume that the way they see the world must represent the way men see the world. And I'm referring to the qualities that women typically look for or find attractive. The fact that women very much do care about a man's accomplishments. Women very much do care about a man's income and care about his education. These attributes, being something they observe in themselves, have been projected by them onto men. So in their collective minds, they assume that men should aspire to find a woman who's educated and economically successful and has a great career, or at least the trajectory for one. They make this assumption and they invest and they go through painstaking efforts to achieve this desirability that they believe will come through pursuing these masculine endeavors. These things that, according to our own assumed intuition, those of us with eyes to see, and also according to work by the likes of Dr. David Buss, by the likes of many others, might I add, Okay, that I don't have time to provide reference for and links for because I know how you savages on the Internet are. Okay, if I had the time and I had the if I had the receipts, I could name others. But I got Dr. David's receipts. All right. I got Dr. Buss's receipts. Okay, now listen, because the true nature of attractiveness is sexually asymmetrical, you're noticing a rising tension between women who have a certain set of expectations, i.e., or namely that their efforts to pursue these economic and career and um, financial achievements will translate into sexual marketplace or marriage marketplace value. When they see that transition not happening, when they don't get that payoff for what they have been told by this modern movement and their own assumptive pride, when that doesn't pan out, when they put in that extra effort to go to those extra advanced degrees, to go to that extra mile, earning that promotion, 
intuitively they assume that this will increase their value on the dating market. And to the degree that it does, many of them don't find that a satisfactory bump. They're realizing that the juice isn't worth the squeeze. The value they thought they would increase in or the value they thought they would be able to gain by acquiring these things hasn't translated in the dating market. Men aren't checking for that. Your degree doesn't make him excited, boo-boo. Your degree doesn't make him picture having kids with you, boo-boo, okay? Now, the things that will make him picture having kids with you is youth, beauty, amiability, you know, a shared worldview, um, willing to accommodate his lifestyle and provide peace in his daily life. Now, if on top of those things, you happen to have a great career, oh, sure, great. But it's 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 not it's not the crux of what's making him stick to you, okay? And frankly, it's expendable. Like he could do away with that if he's being real. All right. So in this way, a lot of modern, highly educated, career-driven women are like the counterpart to the quote unquote nice guy, the proverbial nice guy. You know, and they're the same in that they are doing A, B, and C expecting an outcome and then when that outcome doesn't come that's when the true colors come out so the nice guy he's being mr nice guy he's helping you move he's pumping your gas he's checking your oil for you he's coming over and maybe helping out with the yard and when he doesn't get that payoff when there's no romantic interest at the end of this stick for him sometimes that nice guy mask can be thrown to the wayside and the true upset, bitter man underneath is revealed, okay? In the same way, you've got a lot of these modernized, progressive, all is love, love is all women who are putting in that upfront effort. They're getting those advanced degrees. They're killing it in the corporate world. They're getting those promotions. They're putting in those slightly longer hours, all right? And they're hoping that, hey, they're six foot two, handsome, equally educated, equally ambitious, equally, if not more successful, Chad or Tyrone is gonna be ready for them, right? And when it doesn't happen, just like the nice guy, a lot of times, that Mrs. Progressive, all is love, love is all mask gets thrown to the wayside and the bitter truth is revealed. The inner frustrated, seething cat lady is revealed. Okay, so listen, boys. Does her degree make her a catch? No, okay. <laughs> I think the answer is clear so far as we've gone through some of this basic information, some of these basic observations taken from just general culture all the way to the academic, we see the foundation laid for why the answer is simply put, no. Her degree is not that which makes her a catch, okay? Now, a lot of you might be thinking so far, well, you know, you haven't really covered enough. That's not compelling. Like, what, a few studies, one, one professor? Well, I would say to you, you're right. So here's another thing I would like you to consider. You see, women in their hypergamy, they have this biological drive to date better, to date up. In fact, when you hear, if you were to just Google right now, women don't want to date down and just see those results. You will see that the jury's out right now because of this tension, because of the bottleneck between all of these potential wives and all of these men who are not asking them to marry them a lot of women are starting to kind of like consider this and change their mind a little bit on this. But all in all, most women are still driven by hypergamous desires, namely to find a man who's better than them. Now, in comes the voice, the collective voice of modern society saying that men and women are the same. Relationships should be 50-50. Okay, okay, I I'll grant you that collective voice of society well if that is the case women must women must sacrifice their desire to be hypergamous let me break it down simply put if women truly want equal dating landscapes if if women truly want this egalitarian relationship equality then they have to be willing to date a man that's shorter than them 
just like men are willing to date a woman who's shorter than them. Women have to start being willing to make a man who also, not just one of these factors, but like men, men are willing to date a woman who is shorter, who makes less money, who is less educated, and has less success in status, okay? Men are regularly marrying women who fit this description. Now, if women want to come to the table and have this equal egalitarian outcome, they must collectively begin to marry men who are shorter than them, make less money than them, are less successful than them, and have less economic stability than them. Now, do I think women will do that? No, brothers. No, 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 no. If you are red pill, you know that won't happen because hypergamy never loses and it never dies. All right. And that's the interesting thing. As I eat my popcorn and I watch society, I see these two conflicting forces just on a collision course. The hypergamous nature of women and their verbalized desire for egalitarian equal outcomes, especially, particularly when it comes to relationships. 50-50, all of this good stuff, okay? I think it's very interesting. You have women saying they want this egalitarian equality in relationships, but yet they still have a height requirement that's significantly higher than their own. They still are turned off by a man who makes less money than them, okay? So there's these basic biological drivers that women have, and until they open their eyes and acknowledge those, accept those, and live within those, they're going to continue to have this tension. You're going to continue to have books written by women like Melanie Notkin, like Otherhood, describing how frustrating it is to put in all this work and think you're going to get your output and you only get half of what you thought you bargained for. And unfortunately, not the lifelong fulfilling half. Okay? Okay. What's the next step? BBM, what are you saying? So what is the solution? Well, I would say women have a choice, okay? You can continue to emphasize this strong, independent, career-driven caricature, and you can continue to strive for that, but, but, okay, you're going to have to give up hypergamy, all right? You can stay with the strong, independent career stuff, but you're going to have to start, you know, dating smaller men, less, um, less capable men, Less successful men. That's what you're going to have to do if you really want to maintain that and get the husband. All right. Otherwise, the numbers won't add up, ladies. OK, now your other choice, OK, is to be more submissive, to be more traditional, OK, to focus on more complementary traits. OK, and then you can still be hypergamous all you want. OK, now. I hear you already. Well, I know someone who's got 27 degrees and she married a very handsome Chad that she's in love with. There are going to be exceptions, but I'm talking about zooming out, looking at our society by and large, looking at general populations. That idea is not sustainable. OK, women as a whole are going to have to either submit themselves to traditional gender roles and maintain their hypergamy for long term relationship pair bonding or they can maintain their hold on this strong, independent caricature. They can continue to strive for that and they'll have to give up hypergamy. You know, Mrs. CEO is going to have to marry a man who makes less money and is maybe even also shorter and less attractive than her. She's going to have to do it or she can stay single, as we see expressed by the author that I mentioned at the beginning with the book Otherhood. OK, she sees the pattern. I see the pattern. I've had this discussions with family members. We all see the pattern. Some people get a little more salty than others, and that's okay. Some things rub us differently, rub us the wrong way, you know? And there are things that rub me the wrong way, right? But the fact of the matter is the truth is the truth. The numbers do not lie, okay? We see that as education rises in women, their likelihood to divorce a man increases, okay? So that's something to look for as well. So I want to take a look at something. This following excerpts from an article written by Dan Bacon of themodernman.com, okay? And it says, to quote editor Michael Knorr from Forbes.com, guys, a word of advice. Marry pretty women or ugly ones, short ones or tall ones, blonde ones or brunettes. Just whatever you do, don't marry a woman with a career. 
<laughs> now, according to Mr. Noor and many social scientists, by marrying a college-educated career woman, you run a higher risk of having a shaky marriage. It seems that recent studies have found the professional women are more likely to get divorced, more likely to cheat on their husbands, and less likely to want to have children. If they do decide to have kids, they are more likely to be unhappy about it. Okay? Now, you guys can check that out. I will post that link in the description to that article. But, you know, the article kind of goes into a lot of other aspects about divorce. It goes into some of the studies about, you know, the higher education levels and kind of the shakiness of a marriage statistically. So there's some interesting things on that. I don't want to turn this video into just me regurgitating everything. So like I said, I'll put the link in the description so you guys can check that out. My point is this, gentlemen. When it comes to a woman... I'm not here to shame a degree, but we live in a culture where women have overemphasized the value that men place on the degree. And that's the problem. Men innately just don't really care about your accomplishments. Not, not like that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's no nice way to say it. Men don't care about your accomplishments like that. Okay. At best, it is a bonus. Now, I want to end with this. Next, I want to take a quick look at a Reddit post I found. This is from the subreddit Red Pill Women. And it reads, Recently found out that men don't really care about a woman's accomplishments or careers for attraction. Mind is blown. Hmm. So, it continues. Anyone else on the same boat? After reading so many Red Pill Women resources about attraction, such as but not limited to, and she lists a couple articles, she says, I really internalized that men really, really couldn't care less about what career I am in or whether or not I have a PhD. I was completely projecting when I thought my education and accomplishments would make me attractive to the opposite sex. And that makes so much sense. In fact, the author of these articles mentions that for men, dating a woman with a better education slash career than him is akin to a woman dating a man who is much, much better looking than her. So much so that he steals her spotlight in the beauty department. While most women would want to date someone who is attractive, they wouldn't want to date someone who puts so much more attention and value to their own beauty than any woman. That would be a huge turnoff. Likewise, while most high caliber men would like to date someone who is at least educated or has a career, they wouldn't want to date someone who is much more powerful than him as that would render his role as the provider useless. I think of it this way, she continues. I wouldn't want to date someone like Harry Styles, teenage heartthrob and band member. Sure, he's powerful and very good looking, but his beauty is overpowering to the point where it would steal my spotlight in the relationship. I am very turned off by men who do things like post artsy pictures of themselves on social media, wear tight-fitting pants, preoccupy themselves too much about their outfit choices, and so on. As long as they put some minimum effort into their appearance and aren't complete slobs, that is good enough for me. And after a point, their efforts actually work against them. Yes, indeed. Likewise, men would like women who are decently intelligent and have something going for themselves, but they wouldn't necessarily be turned on by a CEO or doctor who most likely will work long hours, be constantly under pressure, and have little to no time for proper relationship. I don't want to date a feminized version of a man. I want to date a man. Likewise, men don't want to date a high-strung masculine version of a woman. They want to date women. Now, I think that that is very, very telling, okay? So, as you can imagine, to be fair, the replies consist of a few people saying, hey, I think you're generalizing. I know someone who is an anecdotal contradiction to what you're saying. So you get those responses. You get a few responses that say, hey, I see where you're coming from, but I think that that trend is changing as more and more young millennials and the next generation enter the workforce and enter the dating world. Fair. I think that's a reflection of our culture. Whether or not those young left liberal leaning people end up happy and successful is yet to be discovered but i will grant that their ideas and their goals about this particular topic are starting to change i will grant you that now in addition to those types of responses you obviously get a whole lot of agreement a lot of men and women agreeing with the sentiment expressed in that first post 
One particular reply that I want to read is as follows. Having married the professional career-minded woman and then divorced her, I can say that I originally thought her career was important for me in my 20s and with blue pill conditioning. Now, with my kids where they are and me in a high power job, I can say that I am not at all attracted to the career side. What I want is a nurturing woman that can provide what I am not bringing to the relationship. The career of my ex was massively in conflict with that. Now, what this reply emphasizes and why I found it important is not only does it kind of echo my intuitive assumptions, echo the research that I found, but it highlights the fact that as a man's value increases, even the perceived value he places on these things decreases. As his value increases, his value that he places on your degree and career and accomplishments decreases. Now, what that means, ladies, and what that means, men, okay, the higher value a man is, the less likely it is that he cares at all whatsoever about your accomplishments, at least in terms of being a romantic partner. As a business partner, sure. Maybe as a consultant, sure. Maybe as even a client, sure. But as a wife, no. Men, particularly high value men, just don't seem to care about that. And in fact, as they mature, as they become more successful, they realize that those attributes become a turn off. They become a hindrance, okay? So, in conclusion, I think that it would be a disservice to go about all this rambling and pontificating about my views on this particular question without lending some advice or at least leaving you with what I think makes a woman a good catch, okay? So when it comes to this, I have this saying that I like to say, modern women are worried about the wrong past, okay? They're more concerned about a man's economic past and about their own economic past than they are about their own physical past. And what I'm trying to say, ladies, is you should care more about your body count than your grade point average. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't care about your grade point average, but what use is it if you have, you know, such good grades if you got 27 illegitimate kids, all right? Of course, I'm exaggerating, of course. But the point is, I think a lot of modern women overemphasize their academic past when men are much more concerned and will be much more deterred or attracted based on the merits of their sexual and physical past, okay? Here are some things that I believe makes a woman a great catch, okay? Does she love God? Is she submitted to God? If she ain't submitted to God, she's definitely not gonna submit to you, okay? Is she beautiful? Is she healthy? Does she have a healthy body weight composition? Is she domestic? Can she cook? Does she keep up a good home? Is her place neat and tidy? Is she going to be a peacemaker in your environment? She laid back. Does she have a sense of humor that matches yours? You know, God forbid, is she funnier than you or is she at least able to laugh at your type of humor? That's very important. Is she fun? Does she create peace? Is she a nurturer? What is her sexual past? Is she very promiscuous? Is she a virgin? Is she pure sexually? And lastly, does she inspire you to be a better man? Okay. I think these are the attributes. These are things that make a woman a catch. Her degree is not on this list. It's extra. It's great. But I don't think a degree really swings the pendulum either way. The degree only adds emphasis to where she is according to these attributes. If she's already a nagging nuisance and she's not attractive and she's not peaceful, her degree is going to be more of a reason to detest her. But if she has all of these qualities, then sure, her ability to also make some money will be great. Okay? So, I think the red pill community kind of understands that it's a woman's youth, beauty, her loyalty, her amiability, all of these attributes supported by how her sense of humor how her submission to God and her life mission, 
how all of these things kind of dovetail into matching with you and your respective goals and your respective attributes and qualities. I think that is what is more important than a woman's degree and a woman's accomplishments. I think this is because of the sexual or rather the gender asymmetry when it comes to sexual attractiveness for long-term pair bonding, okay? Now, I think this has become muddied by uh, the feminist movement that we see here, what I would call fourth wave feminism, okay? I think feminism has gone beyond that which is necessary for true equality, and now it aims at dominance, as in the feminine dominating the male, the reduction of that that which is masculine, the reduction of you know that which is in support of healthy masculinity. So in that regard, I am against this modern overextension of the feminism movement. I think it leads to confusion where you have women aspiring to these traditionally male attributes and finding themselves in otherhood as opposed to motherhood because of the sheer biological reality that attraction is not symmetrical. So ladies, I'll leave you with this. If finding a good high value man is your goal, your best bet is to be willing to submit to authority, be beautiful, be laid back, be fun, be loyal, be inspirational, and be a peacemaker. That's going to get you that high value man 10 times over before your degree and before your list of accomplishments will. Men strive to find beauty, to find loyalty, to find amiability in a package that matches their life missions, their life goals, their humor, their personality, etc. Okay? So boys, you know I gotta leave it off with you. As we continue to look for these attributes in our women to build kingdoms, stay tuned to the channel because I care about you, boys. I don't want to see you spiral into this, this futile life, this empty life of plate spinning. I don't want to see you spiral down the other hole of bitter inseldom. I want to see you self-actualize. I want to see you take all of the possible knowledge that you can gain. I want to see you put in all the possible effort that you can put in. And I want to see you become the best version of yourself. I want to see you king up. I want to see you alpha up. I want to see you man up. And in doing so, I think you can attract a nice baddie. I think you can attract yourself a nice queen that's on your level, that matches your mission. And heck, if she's got a nice little degree, if she got a nice career, she's making some paper on the side, good for her and you. But I caution you, boys, and I find you well advised at this point not to prioritize those attributes when it comes to looking for your woman. If you enjoy this social commentary from the perspective of a red pill black man like myself, please subscribe to the channel, hit that like button. If you wanna be the best version of yourselves, if you wanna be the kingly version of yourself, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and let's grow together. Peace.